So let's talk about some high rocks, Lauren. And um, uh, I guess more than talking about what happened, I'd rather just kind of check in with like how you're doing. It's been about 10 days since the event and uh, you did not get the result you wanted, but I know that you always talk about what the, for you, it's about effort. Cause I've talked to you when you've won races, I've talked to you when you've come in second. Um, and then at one time you were pregnant and came in seventh or whatever it was. But anyway, for you, you said it's always about your effort. So how are you, and how are you feeling about your effort 10 days later? Um, I mean, effort, like I'm stoked about because, uh, like in, in that particular race, it would have been very easy to completely check out. So, um, in terms of staying mentally engaged and, and fighting probably through the most discomfort I've ever been in. Um, like that's probably the most proud of an effort I've ever had. Um, not you guys, sorry. This discomfort. Can you describe that? Um, this like, so discomfort in that when I came off of the sled pole, um, I was trashed, like completely trashed. Normally when I'm doing that station, um, like obviously I'm trying and I'm working hard, but that's a station that I try and be moderately conservative on because I actually, I like to really race the next like 20 minutes there. Um, and, and instead of being able to be like moderately conservative on it, I had to use like every ounce of me that I had to even make it move, like let alone like move fast just to like make it move. So when you I, say was the a, next I, I was like in a lot of discomfort for the rest of the race and putting just putting one foot in front of the other was was hard. It was really hard. So to to do that and then stay on it to the best of my ability um like that's what i'm proud of so did you were there points that you did think even if it was for a millisecond I, i'm just gonna fucking like coast it in because this race is lost and then like oh shit never. no not even for a second never not even for a second not not for a second i like I would fight until they had to pull me off. Like in, unless like I actually could not put a foot in front of the other. Um, and, and like, there was just so much pain that I physically couldn't move. Not like not even a second. There wasn't a second that I was unwilling to just push to the end and see what could happen. All right. So then take me through it. You, leave that station seventh or eighth and you know that like you know you're behind everybody right so right. no i i i knew yeah 100 percent. you could see people leaving the station right and so I, I mean i love the fact that you didn't doubt it for a second i just feel like most of us have that default that comes in like what am i doing this is stupid and then okay let me get back on it but I mean, again, well, I think I think that's why the, you're the athlete who you are is that you're like, I actually don't think that way. I'm just like, let's get back into it. So there there wasn't like a thought process that, oh, I can still get this place. It was I didn't doubt that I was not going to fight till the end. Like there's no way to know. I can't control what anybody else is doing on course. There's no way to know where I'm going to end up finishing. So it's not going to be about like where you're finishing. It's about knowing I'm going to give every ounce of effort I have until I cross that finish line. So that's it. It's not even about, so right. You're not, you're not thinking like, okay, I've just, I'm now I'm six, now I'm fifth. It's just like, let's just go. Yeah. Because, because that, that is like, that is the only thing I can control. Like I can only control. I know we all say that though. Effort. You actually seem to, you seem to do really well. Again, we all say that, like I can only race how I race. I can't control the car. We all say that, but I feel like you're able to, and again, it's why you're, you know, who you are and one of the best and, and all of that, because if you're able to do that, that's, that's a, that's a, that's 
I, I know you're super humble, but I'm just going to say it. That's what makes you, whoa, I lost my fucking headphones. <laughs> I'll say this so you don't have to, but that's what makes you a champion. Even though you weren't the champion of this race, that's what a champion does is has, you know, that extra place to go to of I'm going to just grind this out. And I think, I think. Well, think, so think how disappointed you could be if you, if you are not willing to put like, to grind it out with everything you have. Like the, the race is only an hour long. Like I can push for an hour. Um, it, what, no matter what place I'm in, no matter what discomfort I'm, I'm feeling, I can push for an hour and then be able to cross that line and be happy with what I did. Um, I, I would be upset if I didn't like, I'm not gonna, I can control that. Like I'm not going to allow myself to, look back and be like, man, I should have done this or man, I should have worked harder. Like, I don't ever want to look back and think I should have worked harder. Well, you said the next 20 minutes. So is that like everything before the wall balls? Like when you say the next 20 minutes, tell me what you meant by that. You said you like to take it easy, quote um, unquote, or, or no, definitely not, not easy, but not like easy. you have to be the, the sleds are still, early on um you can't you you cannot fully overwork yourself there um like you can almost like an assault bike where you can you can give like these short bursts and this is more comparable to a sled push than a sled pull but you can give these short bursts and then give yourself a little bit of reprieve and then a short burst and give yourself a little bit free but if you're going if you're slamming an assault bike as hard as you can for 30 seconds like you're going to be wiped. Like it's, it's better to maybe go like 10 seconds. Unless on, you're, unless you're bit, Kevin Gregory, right? Gregory. Yes. Unless you're Kevin Gregory, but I'm not Kevin Gregory. So that's the Kevin. I don't know how he does it. Um, again, that like, no matter so what how hard I work, that is not something I'll be able to do. Oh, so most... the next, so after that, there's a run, there's burpees, there's a run. And then you get to the row. So like that run burpee run, like I like to race that part. That's like, and and that's the whole point of it. All of this, like I I like to race. Like I want to race. I want to be in the race. Um, I was in I was in like no man's land for most of this one. So uh, I felt like I didn't I didn't get that endorphin like little burst that I normally get in a race because I I get to be part of it. Um, I felt like I was by myself for a lot which is not nearly as fun as when you're, you're in the mix with people. Um, and, and you can't ever hear any commentary while you're watching these things, but like, we're like, we're all still super supportive while we're racing and you can cheer on somebody if they're passing you or you're passing them along things. And could you, and hear, could you have... hear Anthony? Could you hear Anthony? He, I, yeah. I mean, he like for the runs, he propped himself up on like a certain corner of um, of the course. So I, not only could I hear him, but like, I knew when to expect to see him. And are you listening? I mean, yes, but I'm, I'm like, cause it's on a run. I am only hearing him for like maybe five seconds. Right. But I just, I've talked to you before. It's funny. Cause I've talked to him before about like a plan and sometimes you exceed that plan because you just, that's what you feel like doing. So like, I guess in this case, obviously hearing the loving, supporting voice of your husband is one thing, but I'm saying, is it like what he told me he was doing was he was just trying to tell you kind of how far back you were from the pack. Hey, you're 30 seconds off the podium. You're whatever. Like, so again, was that even factoring what you say, or you were just like, well, I've got one gear now anyway, and it's called give 110% survival time. mode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, no, I could hear him. Um, and he was giving me, it was kind of two splits and they're more realistic splits. So gap to the person in front of me and then gap to second place. Um, right. and, uh, so I could hear those. I could under, I could understand and process that while I'm running. Um, and, and again, I could, sort of think about whether or not it would be possible to catch up but in the end it didn't matter because 
my effort level wasn't going to change whether or not I heard it, but it, it was nice to know, um, I I'm making progress. Like I am getting closer. Like my efforts are doing something. So when you came into the wall balls, do you know what position you were in? Approximately. I mean, I, I don't think, um, I don't know if I knew the exact number that I was in, but I knew, I knew about where I was. Um, and, but what I didn't know was how many wall balls, um, Viola and Linda were at because they were, they were further to my right. Um, I could see where Vivian was at cause I was directly next to her, which I have an amazing photo of Vivian and I at the wall balls. And, um, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to be the one to share it because like we both look like a complete mess and I don't want to do that to somebody else. But if she wants to share it, it's so funny. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, ask her. I would love to share it as well. Um, yeah. So she said, I think she said you broke once. I think I broke twice, which is actually um, not that's not normal for me, but again, the, like the, the place that I was in, in terms of like how much I could actually move, I was so much more taxed in, in, from the sled pull on than I normally am. So your body was still, you were still taxed. Oh yeah. I was taxed. I mean, I, like I could move and I could fight, but um, there was a limit to it for sure. So do you remember how it broke down? Like how many? I gave you an approximate. I think I broke out like maybe 60. Um, and then the second time it, it was actually more, um, it like slipped through my hands. Like it was just because everything was so wet. Did you, um, did, did you, how was your, like, were you getting no reps? Was it, was the counter working, like all that stuff? So they did let us practice it um, in the briefing um, earlier that day. And I'm really glad that they did because um, I learned where I had to actually hit it in order to make the rep count. So it, like for them, accuracy is part of it. Um, and, and I'm not here to, to argue whether or not the targets should be smaller or bigger or, or whatever. So normally in a normal you can race, let, you, just, you can let Anthony do that. So in a normal race, you're just hitting the target and it's always going to count for, for this one. You had to hit like a very small area in order for the, the rep to count. Um, so like learning exactly where I needed to hit it during that briefing in order for it to count was very helpful because I, I knew exactly where it needed to go. So by the time the race came, I actually didn't get any no reps for, for like going too high or too low or to the side. Like I, I hit it on the dot every single time where I definitely wouldn't have, if they didn't let us practice it, I wouldn't have known where I was supposed to hit it. So their thinking was, we're going to make it more accurate for the world championship. And then we're going to make it less accurate for moving forward like did they say that or this is how it's going to be moving forward for elite 15 for majors they didn't say they didn't say i don't know if i were to make a guess i'm sure they're going to use it moving forward um so yes it is a sport but at the same time like they're trying to they're trying to make something that they can market um and then and i and i understand that having a screen there for for the audience to be able to see and for um, like people at home watching to be able to see, to see the counters. I understand that that creates a lot more suspense and people can be more engaged. Um, it does make it harder on the athletes. Um, but I think, I think that's just something we're going to have to figure out because I expect to see it from now on. So, I had a great chat with Vivian, kind of her experience of crossing the finish and how she found out about her placement. And what was that like for you when you finally 
through that last wall ball and ran across? Um, so I threw the last wall ball. I ran across. I don't actually know where the um, the timing strip is. Like I don't I don't know when we're done. Um, I don't know if it's at the bottom of the ramp or the top of the ramp, or I, I haven't. I actually don't know. It that feels enough. like it would have to be the bottom, right? I don't know, and because I've never thought about it either. But the fact that when when you cross, it'll have it instantly has your time and says new world record or whatever. I feel like it must be, it must be at the bottom. But yeah, that's a great question. Like like in Spartan, I didn't know until like year like seven or eight that like it's actually before. Or the fire jump, and then they have another one after the fire jump as like a as like a whatever. Anyhow, we should probably find out. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I'm em I'm I'm embarrassed that I don't know the answer to that. I feel like I should know the answer to that, but I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know we were all really close. And again, I am going to fight until the end. And it's hard when I don't know where the end is. Um, and and like Viola like started walking up the ramp, and I'm like. We gotta go. Like you gotta run. <laughs> this is, like I'm gonna run all the way through because there's people right behind us. I can't not run all the way through. I need you to run all the way through as well because you've put all this effort in. Like I don't wanna, I don't wanna be that person passing like in the last half second. You like, you gotta go because I don't have time because there's people behind us, like chasing us through. Like we both have to run. So when she was like kind of strolling up the the ramp i'm like well i don't know where the end is like keep going like, oh. um uh, so wherever the timing mat is i think it turned out that we our timing chip crossed at the same time um and she so on the on the board when you're running you can see like if somebody has a penalty um so she had a penalty from like station number one so I knew like there was a like a three second buffer there. And um but again, I don't know if Hyrux is gonna hold to that. So when I crossed, I didn't know if I was second or third because I don't know if they're gonna keep that time penalty. We cross at the same time. Do we share second place? And then and then there were no reps. Um and they called Viola and myself back. I go back and I do a rep, and the judge says, no, you're not the person that no rep. <laughs> um, you need to go back up. And and I was like, what? Okay. So it was Vivian, it was Vivian and Viola that no repped. And I think because there was so much confusion and they called like the wrong athletes back, obviously that's not fair to Vivian to now have an extra minute plus added to her time because they didn't call the correct athlete back. Um so I, I, I can't speak for Hyrox, but I think to alleviate that confusion and not give her all this extra time, they just gave both of them a five-second penalty. But I thought that was, I assumed that was the rule anyway, was the five seconds. Is it usually a minute? I don't think it's um, actually written. I, I could be wrong, but I don't think it's actually written in the rule book right now. Um, probably will be moving forwards, but I don't think that's in the rule book. Yeah, I think they did handle it well on the spot. And yeah, they definitely need to tighten it up for next year. And hopefully they'll spend some time on it um, because this pointed out, I mean, it could have been much worse. Like luckily they seem to have gotten it right and you guys all handled it well. So, you know, all in all, it, it's okay. I mean, I think Viola might still be upset. She, I didn't get a chance to talk to her yet, but like she commented that she wasn't happy. Um, so, I mean, I don't blame her. Like I was heartbroken for her. So I've known Viola for five years now and, and, and sure. I don't get to see her that often, but like there's, I mean, there's a bond that you, that you form with, with people when when one you know them for that long when when you're traveling and seeing them in all these different countries and um i mean i'm not young but five years is still like a pretty good chunk of my life so um <laughs> <laughs> like that's a long time to like know and be rooting for somebody and and in vienna when she qualified like i was so I don't even know how to explain it. I was so excited for her because I knew she was having such a rough time. And then to come to world championships and she was like smashing it. She was doing so well. And then 
for for all the confusion and chaos and and things to kind of just play out the way they did with like she ended up with two different penalties um it's just heartbreaking yeah um so when did you make the call that you were going to take sunday off sunday yeah um i think like with again i'm not a doctor but i think with all the adrenaline and the excitement um i didn't register that i was in pain um and i and but it but i didn't even register that i was in pain until saturday morning i went to do like a flush out run and um and it, at first it just started with like a nagging pain and i was still kind of um just like trying to jog on it but as i kept going it got worse and worse um to the point where i stopped so I was out like on the boardwalk by the beach and I was out there jogging and I was like, I, I can't like, I actually can't run. Um, so I ended up walk limping my way back to the hotel. Um, and uh, I have like a couple therapy things with me while I travel. So I, I tried doing as much as I could to, to make it, to make it better. Um, what do you, uh, some- what what are your go-to? Do you have a massage gun? Do you have like a little ball? What are your go-tos? I have a massage gun. I have a stim machine. Um, I have scrapers. So like that was what I had on hand with me. And then um, one of Linda's coaches, um, actually, he's, um, I don't know what they call it in Germany, but I think like the equivalent over here is a physical therapist. Um, he, I feel like he called it something else though. Um, he spent a really, really like so grateful, like a long time, um, working on me when he has all these other athletes that he's also trying to help get ready for their race. Um, so he was kind of evaluating and working on me and he put some cupping on and some voodoo bands and, um, he did some like manual manipulation. Um, and it, I mean, there's no magic fixes, like when something pops up and it's acute. Um, so on sun, like on Sunday, I went to the venue, they have a bunch of treadmills and stuff. Um, I tried to warm up, I tried to get on it to just to, just to see like, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to run through pain. Like, if it's just pain, and I can still, like, get to a clip that I'm going to be useful. I really wanted to do that race. Um, I didn't care how much pain I was going to be in. I was going to do it, but um, I couldn't, I couldn't get past the trot. Like I, I couldn't jog. Um, I was like, that's just, it's just not fair to them just because I want to be on team USA. Like it's not fair to them to lose how, I don't even know how much time because I want to play. So um they i think like they actually saw me with a bunch of therapy stuff on my legs before i even said uh i wasn't going to be able to do it um when you talk about going for a jog because that whole like town was taken over by high rocks people would you get recognized kind of everywhere it was wild actually <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the, I felt like all of Nice was high rocks. Um, (laughs) I couldn't, I like every, I don't even think it would be like a whole minute in between people either like actively stopping me, like physically stopping me or, um, some like other people would just wave, say, hi, good job. Congratulations. Um, but, but there were, I mean, there were others that were much more straightforward and even though i was and it didn't matter because obviously like my jog was not going well um but like would stop me and be like and want to talk and chat and 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 i was happy to do so because like i mean that's also a big part of this like we're trying to build a community we're trying to find ways to encourage people to pursue goals and be healthy and happy and have a reason beyond like this is good for me to be doing movement and thinking about what we're eating. Um, 
so of course, like I'm, I'm happy to stop and, and talk with people. But yeah, it's like the boardwalk was filled with high rocks people. Filled. Yeah, so that New York event was the first event that I've that I was at that looked like those European events. When I got there and we couldn't cross, um, and they later kind of fixed it that it was a little bit better, but basically to get from kind of reg to in the arena was like insanity. I was like, this is like crazy. And I know that's what it's been like for them. And then people said like the downside is if you ran at a certain time, it slowed you down. Um, but it definitely felt, I mean, it just, it felt huge. Um, and people loved being there and they looked out. It was basically like a day like today. So it was just, but it was like, oh, wow. Like, I mean, I've, you know, I come on here every week and talk about how excited I am. The sport is growing, but going to that event uh, and then the world champs being as big as they were. And, you know, like my feed is still nothing, but like people still posting these thoughts and right. So yeah, yeah it's awesome to be a part of this. And then, I mean, I'm I'm grateful it's here now, but I would have loved to have grown up with like watching people doing these types of things and and knowing that this was something out there and and there were other things to to do and get excited for in a fitness way as an adult. I mean, look at me, I'm in all of you, so yeah. I mean, I, I found even, you know, just doing a sport like this, I didn't even find running, but that's my own choice, I guess, till I was like 40 before I started doing Tough Mudders and Spartan. And I was like, oh, I should start training for this. And how did you train for it? Did you like, did you join like a group class? So there, my friends and I, there were like 10 of us that did our first Tough Mudder together. And like, we would go for runs and it was like every, like all the articles would just be like, you know, do body weight exercises and be able to run at least five miles. That was kind of the overall vibe because 10 miles sounded really far. And like, listen, you'll be fine on a race day. You're going to be walking at some of the obstacles. And so we would, we did this stone mountain, which is a thing here, like this four mile trail route at stone mountain. And then we would go up and down the mountain, which is like a good hike. And then we actually would jump into the bridge, which was cold water. And we were like, this is, that's what it was. That was training for obstacle racing in 2012. I mean, it, I'm sure it worked for, for everybody well, in this I group. Just, I'm sure it was better I, than what they might've been doing on their own. But I also just, I, but it's kind of typical what you hear people, all the people I've interviewed over the years is there were 12 of us at the first race. There was one of us at the second race. You know what I mean, like they were just like, that was good. I'll do it again. And you're like, okay, I'm going to sign up. And they're like, okay, I will. And then they never do. Right. Or maybe one does, but then we found, we all found each other in the groups online, but running did that thing for me that I always heard about. Like I wasn't, I still didn't enjoy going to the gym and I didn't like lifting weights was for other people. Like just in my mind, just these stories I've made up, but Oh wow. I'm a runner. Now I can put my shoes on. I can leave my house. I can do five miles and I feel amazing. You know what I mean? So that was the piece that just kept me going. Um, well, there's so something to be said about like being able to like identify yourself as part of some sort of community. Like there's, there, there's a lot of power in that. So like to say I'm a runner and to know that there's this massive running community out there. Um, it's, I know, it's but for draw. me, it was a little bit, it was a little bit different for me though, because it was obstacle racing, which was really weird and it's still weird to talk about, right? Just like describing high rocks is now kind of weird to people. Um, but as the obstacles got harder and harder, I still wasn't going to a ninja gym or working on my grip strength. And so like as the obstacles got harder, I was just a runner that just enjoyed going to OCR. And now I'm just kind of skipping the obstacles and doing my media thing. But basically I'm getting now at 50 what I got out of running at 40 because I finally started putting in the work, right? I got these Rams sent to me and uh, actually using them. 
and I got a wall. Somebody sent me a wall ball, and I'm using that. And I got a brute force sandbag that I use. And so now I'm finally kind of finding fitness in a way. Like I said, I'm finding the same enjoyment that I just wasn't. Whatever, everything in its time. You know, it's not like I. It's not like I couldn't have gone to the gym with my wife this whole time. It just never. I never wanted to. You know what I mean? I only went to the gym with yeah. her when I needed when I had PT, and it was like, oh, you should just. Or I can't run, so use the rower. You know what I mean? But that's like, I mean, that's a whole like the whole thing of it too is finding finding something that you enjoy. And and we're not all gonna enjoy the same things. And I don't know if your wife likes to to do workouts where they're using rams. Um, but but I mean if you do and that's giving you like an internal drive and excitement to go and get this workout in and and you're then bettering yourself to for not only that day, but for your family, for the future, like in just so many different ways, it, it, it like rolls and spirals onto itself. But um, I mean, it, it, it's not for everybody, but um, I think there is a massive amount of people that will enjoy it and will get a lot of benefit from the fact that something like this is exploding so much. Yeah. Well, something that I feel like we bring up every time we talk is that TMX where I met you, right? And even then, you guys were doing. I think you did cleans with the sandbag. We did. So they changed. Yes, we did cleans. And then I think in the, they changed movements from like qualifier one, qualifier two to the finals. I think in the finals, it was thrusters with the sandbag. Right. They, like, tried but either to way, it. Right. But my point was that even that was like complicated for me because all I knew was obstacle racing and running. So like, even I remember commentating with E-Rock and being like, I don't, this looks like CrossFit to me. I don't fucking know. You know what I mean? And again, it's so basic. I can't imagine yeah. how complicated it was for people. To, so, <laughs> those, well, because those, th that was at, like, my peak CrossFit days. Like, that was when I was as, like, the strongest I've ever been in my entire life. And those sandbags were heavy. Like, and I was much stronger than I am right now. Like I still have not reached the strength level that I was pre-pregnancy. Like but I was faster. much stronger than you're faster now, right? I would say I'm faster now. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely so... faster. But I'm just saying like for somebody who was striving to be at the CrossFit games, like that's the level of strength I had. Like those sandbags were heavy. I'm so sure I, I can't imagine up. somebody. But yeah, that to me. Um, but yeah, and so um, I was going to ask you would, you, would you rather be faster than stronger now? It's fun to be both. Um, I mean, ideally, I want, like, I want both. I still enjoy doing both. Um, I think... I think, um, how do I say it? I'm enjoying the, I've, I'm enjoying pursuing the running more right now just because I'm still seeing progress in that. Um, and progress is fun. Like I, I like to see that, that I'm getting faster. Um, whereas, I mean, I've spent 10 plus years trying to get stronger and I've definitely stagnated. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty close to my kind of top level physical limit in that without making drastic changes in my lifestyle. Um, so I do it cause I enjoy it, but it's not as fun because I'm not seeing like the progress there, but, but I'm still seeing progress in running. So like that is a huge draw for me. Like I love being able to find ways to just get better at something. Um, and I'm, I'm uh, not really getting much stronger as hard as I try. Right. It just feels like for high rocks, unless they move the weights up, it seems like getting faster would be the way to go because there is kind of a limit on, you know, how fast you can push the sled or. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you got to be careful with it because um, you, you do need like, yes, like these machines are, they can be endurance based, but you do need the strength to be able to have the power to move them efficiently and, and with less effort, because if you're, 
if you're going into something and you can still maintain the pace as the person next to you, but it's taking you significant amount of effort. Now, what is that doing to your run? Um, same thing with like the wall ball. Sure. The wall ball is not crazy heavy, but um, it is a lot of reps. You need to be strong and have a lot of muscular endurance for it. So it, it's tricky. Like you, yes, you want to be fast, but um, you have to be really careful to not overdo that endurance training and lose too much strength. All right. Well, why don't you let folks know um, this is where you can plug the hybrid engine, the coaching platform, which you and your husband do. Yeah. So <clears throat> we have um, two tracks right now. We have the pro track, um, which is very high volume. Um, and then we have our daily dose, which is supposed to be max an hour a day. Um, those are two tracks. We've got multiple add-ons. We have like a running add-on. We have a strength add-on. Um, we're adding, we're, we're adding even a, a couple more. Um, in terms of one-on-ones, um, we have gotten a lot of um, interest in those, but we, we don't take on a lot of, a lot of one-on-ones. Like we, we, we try and make sure that it is as personalized as possible. And I don't think that's, if you're taking on a lot of people, I don't think that's fair. Um, so our track is fully open and <clears throat> When you are in it, we have multiple different avenues to be part of the community. So we have a Facebook group. Um, there's also conversations within the app that we use. Um, we give you, if you tell us that you have an event coming up, we give you a specific taper for that event. So there is quite a bit of personalization even within the track. And, and we explain like very detailed notes of substitutions, time caps, like what the intention of the workout is very detailed. Um, I would encourage you to go in and, and try, like it's a free week trial just, to, just to see if it's something that you vibe with. And where do, where do we go for get that <clears throat> hybridengine.com or where do I go? Uh, you can go to hybridengine.com. Um, you can go to the hybrid engine Instagram page and there will be a link to it. Um, if you can't find either of those, you can go to my Instagram and, and I link it to the hybrid engine. Um, but yeah, the hybridengine.com is the fastest way to get to it. Um, 